Hi guys, this is Epic Aswani here and uh, today I want us to talk about using artificial intelligence uh, AI based solutions to write assignments. AI is here to stay and to be fair, it's not okay for us to ignore it or not utilize it. Because technology is meant to make our life easier. So I've been getting a lot of questions from students and writers regarding AI use in completing assignments and to be fair or to be honest, it is not something that can just ignore and say that, you know what, we should just do things the traditional way. So there are quite a number of things that you must be aware of before you even try to use AI. So basically today I want to talk about the types of AI tools that we have so that when you use them, you are aware that you're actually using an AI based solution to complete an assignment. So to begin with, we have various types of AI softwares or solutions that we can use. We have very simple ones, such as those that you can use to paraphrase content. And we also have advanced tools that you can use to actually generate content on the go. For example, if you're using a tool such as Squillbot, it allows you to paraphrase content. So basically, you give it a, um, a paragraph or an entire paper and it can paraphrase for you. Paraphrasing means just interchanging the words so that the paper sounds a little different from the original paper. Now, even when you're paraphrasing, you can realize that Quillbot will have additional features. For example, it can allow you to sort of um, shrink the content or rather compress it or even expand the argument so that the, paper be the, the output becomes longer or shorter based on your preferences. It also have a lot of other features. You can formalize the, the content even as you paraphrase. You can you know, make it sound a little bit more casual and many other features. Now, Quillbot is available for free. It has a free version. However, the free version has some limitations. Uh, for example, you can only paraphrase uh, 125 words per time. So you cannot upload an entire document. But if you choose to use the paid, uh, uh, the, the premium packages, you will have access to more features and you can actually just upload an entire document and it will paraphrase the, the entire document for you. But still, this is an AI based solution. So when it comes to AI detectors such as Tanitin, if you used a Quillbot to complete the assignment, it is highly likely that it, the paper will be flagged as AI generative because at the end of the day, even this paraphraser is actually an AI-based solution. This is not a human being sitting there paraphrasing the content for you. It is based on artificial intelligence. Now, we also have other advanced AI solutions that can generate content based on a prompt. For example, we have X.AI, we have ChatGPT, and many other that are based off the OpenAI platform. That basically, you just give it um, a prompt and it will automatically generate the content for you, including even referencing and citing. Now, these ones offer more advanced features in terms of you can just tell it, this is what I want to try it. For example, you can just give it a prompt, just what are the effects of COVID-19 on the economy and it will just generate the whole paper for you and we have a lot of them. Others are even integrated within uh, the Microsoft environment such as Copilot. You can just like type in um, a prompt and it will take it from there. You can even just start a conversation and it can actually complete the conversation for you. Now these ones are actually more advanced and again if you use that to complete a paper a good AI detecting software can actually tell the difference, can actually flag this document as AI generated. Now, we also have these other ones calling themselves AI removers. So basically, these are other softwares or other software solutions or AI-based solutions that claim that they can remove AI from an AI-generated content. This is actually a, a big scam because to begin with, these softwares themselves are AI based. It's not a human being seated there, you know, removing the AI or humanizing the text. It's actually another AI that you're actually using. So again, a good AI detector can still detect and flag that paper as AI generative because it's still AI that you used. But most of these AI detectors are not 100% accurate because most of them are working based on the language they have been fed. They're um, which basically the back end of the process of developing an AI. So they have been fed with certain information so that if they see certain things, they can say whether this is human text or AI generative text. 
So sometimes if you write so well, these softwares or these platforms or these solutions can actually mistake your content for AI generative. Now, does it mean that you don't write so well? No, of course not. Most schools will understand that there's some level of acceptable uh, you know, AI use percentage that will definitely not cause you any trouble. But again, that means that even as you're writing, try to be very human. Try to avoid using difficult vocabulary or difficult or very complica complicated uh, phrases when you're writing that would mislead an AI detector to think the code is AI generative. We also have other very basic AI-based AI solutions, such as Grammarly. Grammarly basically edits your paper, but in the process of you paraf uh, improving the grammar of your paper, the Grammarly tool can actually introduce phrases that will be flagged off as AI generated. So even as you're using Grammarly to proofread your work, to remove mistakes and generally to improve the grammar, you have to be very careful when you use, you're doing it because sometimes uh, the software can actually recommend your write senders in a particular way, which ultimately will be flagged off as uh, a, a, a generative code. So you have to be very careful when you're using AI, but if you're writing any paper that is supposed to be submitted in a school for the awarding of a grade or a mark or for you to like complete a particular course, it's very important you try to be as original as possible. You can still make use of AI-based solutions to you know make your work a lot easier. For example, you can Get a paper uh, generated by AI so that you can use it as a sample, so that you can have the initial ideas of how to go about it, because it can actually help you break down the question, maybe give you a perspective that you did not initially see, but ultimately you have to be the one doing the paper. You have to be the one actually writing the paper as opposed to copying whatever the AI has generated for you. So if you're writing a paper for academic purposes, please try to make sure that it's as original as possible, which means it is as human as possible. That now requires you to actually be very active in terms of actually writing the paper as opposed to letting the AI do it for you. Because schools have countermeasures. You may get away uh, the first time, the second time, but ultimately you will be caught because um, even as we continue using AI, so as the AI detectors are being improved, they are being improved to catch or to detect more advanced software use. For example, if you're using an AI detector today, maybe today it will get a, you'll get a pass, maybe it won't be detected, but tomorrow the same paper will be detected. I've had cases where students have even been recalled of an assignment they completed several um, months ago and they were actually graded, you know, but due to suspicion of frequent use of AI, the teachers went back to try to also check the previous assignments and they discovered that they were actually a generative content. So you can use AI to get started, you know, just give you a starting point, a head start, so that you can actually understand how to proceed. But you should never use AI or submit a generative content as your own work. In other areas, maybe you're doing, you're in the business field, you want to write a report, you want to write, you know, like anything business related, not really assignment related in a class scenario, you can make use of these AI tools to make it even better, make your work easier and probably even make the whole presentation or report even better. Because these AI tools have a lot of good features. You can ask them to generate even images for you, you know. You can ask it to generate images for you, generate graphs for you, and you know, just do a bunch of other things. Now, the other weakness that I've noticed with a lot of these AI-based solutions is that when it comes to referencing, most of them are not very accurate in terms of the, the referencing bit. They can reference an article that is not, um, uh, is not, you know, particularly related to the content or is not very, um, you know, uh, recent. They can even cite very old materials. So when it comes to referencing, you have to be very keen because they are not very accurate. Uh, in, in fact, some of the schools these days are asking you to provide even the page number so that you can pinpoint uh, the specific page number where you got your information from. And some of these AI cannot do that. They cannot cite the specific page number where you should be getting information. So that's all for today. Um, I'll be producing more content to, you know, like just help us understand how to make use of artificial intelligence and how to can make it, uh, how we can use it to make our work easier as writers and again how students can use 
AI safely because you can still use it. In most cases, if you use it, you have to declare that you use it in the paper. You have to say these are the software that I use. For example, I use Grammarly for grammar edits because some of the schools will allow you to use Grammarly, but you have to declare that you use Grammarly. So we'll be engaging uh, about AI and let's just continue conversation regarding artificial intelligence and how we can make good use of it. So until next time, stay safe.